Hey everybody, Steven here and welcome back to Command Center Wargaming. So today, we're going to start our airbrushing playlist, okay? So the airbrushing beginner's guide, okay, is going to, I'm going to be actually turning this into a playlist, all right? And we're going to, we're going to have a series of videos, all right? That's going to go through airbrushing, all right? We will have a beginner's, we'll have, we'll have an advanced, okay? And we'll have an expert session. Now the reason is, is because... Like, although you can just sort of like jump in there and turn the thing on and just start airbrushing and, and, and just put paint on a model, uh, it isn't always exactly the best result to do that, okay? So, just so you know. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through some gear with you today, all right, that I use. So, um, you know, I obviously research around the net a lot and uh, I find that people are sort of using different things at different times. Um, but this is, I'm not saying that they're wrong, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to say that they're wrong. I'm just saying that this is what I use. This is what works for me, okay? Now, you might watch this video, you might already have an airbrushing workflow, okay? And, you know, maybe you could take something away from this video, right? And incorporate it into your workflow. Maybe not, okay? Maybe, you know, you're, you know, you, you've got it sorted, okay? But I have had a lot of requests on the channel, all right, to do uh, some airbrushing tutorials and everything like that. And uh, I quite enjoy airbrushing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break it down like this, okay? I'm going to pull it onto the webcam to have a look at some popular models that I don't use. Uh, now, there's a reason for that. Uh, popular doesn't necessarily mean the best, okay? So... Uh, and then I'm going to go, I'm going to chuck it on the camera. We're going to do like a, you know, top down sort of view of all the gear. Okay. And so this video is going to be an overview. All right. We're going to talk about compressors, the different types of compressors. We're going to talk about the airbrushes, okay, themselves, the different types of airbrushes. Okay. The different types of airbrushes that I use. Uh, I use a fair few different styles. Okay. And um, my all time favorite here, the super fine detail one which is one of my secret weapons, um, which I don't understand, like all these experts on YouTube, and they're all using 0.4 millimeter, um, four millimeter um, nozzles on their airbrushes. So they're either broke or they're idiots. I just don't understand like, you know, how they can, like you know, I'm watching things and it's basically like, people say, oh, well, we're doing this for miniatures. We're specializing in airbrush painting for miniatures and they're using completely the wrong tools, and then they go, oh, I water, I water, I water, and oh, I went and uh, got an I water because everybody else was using an I water, and we don't know exactly what it does or what it is, but let's just uh, not bother researching anything. Let's just go out and just follow the leader, okay? So, look, I water are a good airbrush, okay? Um, and I'm not hanging crap on them. They're a, they're a very good airbrush. But all I'm saying is there's absolutely no difference between that airbrush and another airbrush of the same type, like a Badger or even a Sparmax within that price range, okay? Um, but me, I do my airbrushing, to me, airbrushing and airbrush, okay? A, a workman, all right, a tradesman doesn't blame his tools, okay? Um, a good artist, a good miniature painter, a good airbrusher can work with anything, all right? Can work with anything. It doesn't matter. All right, you don't need, you don't basically need to go for all these brands and things like that, okay? Just by using an airbrush itself, you're going to get like a massive boost in your productivity. I'm going to explain all that later, okay? Um, but to me, if you ask me what's the best airbrush, I say, well, for what purpose, right? And I, I tend to rate my airbrushes on practicality, right? You can't see that one. It's in the, it's in the thing. This is a super precision one. Epic for miniatures. Um... Tamiya, I guess everyone is so, you know, enthralled with Citadel and Vallejo and all these, you know, I mean, and, 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 and I waters and badges that don't actually go and research stuff on the internet. Uh, either that or they're shills and they're getting paid to pump certain brands. I don't know. But I, I, as I said, I just, I just use what's best for me. Um, you know, so to me, if I'm going to go show you a bunch of airbrushes, I'm going to go show you these airbrushes and say, well, look, what do these do? This obviously is for... A lot of in, you know industrial batch production, right? You got a massive, you got a massive um, uh, a cup here, all right? Okay, so all my air uh, brushes are gravity fed, by the way, uh, except for this guy. 
okay, which isn't gravity friend, which is a Pasashi. All right, now this is this is uh, seen some action. It's it's one of my, my first higher end airbrushes, um, and uh, but the problem is it's really good for vehicles and things. But the nozzle is very thick. But you can change the nozzle. It's it's not a big deal, but it's also quite heavy. And uh, and I like you'll see you'll see. All right, I'll show you this. I'll show you exactly why for miniatures. For for stuff like Tiger tanks and all that, you know, like big kits, you know, like one to sixteen scale kind of thing. These are great. But for miniatures, we need to go. You know, we got to we got to break it down a little bit more. Okay, so it's uh, it's like that. So. Yeah, look, we're gonna go. We're gonna go have a look at that. Um, I also picked this up today, which is really cool. Uh, this is an Eastern Front camo book, so I'm gonna be doing that in another review on the channel. Um, there was a we have a new subscriber there, um, Doctor Taddeus or something like that. Sorry, and uh, he was asking me advice on how to paint his Imperial Guard, and um, this is what this book's for. All right, but again, this is for a later stage. We'll, we'll have a look at that in another tutorial, but it is here we are going to be doing it, okay? So yeah. Um, Alright, fantastic. Well look, let's go, let's get into it, and um, I'll speak to you more on a ground level. Uh, we're going to start off with the webcam, like I said, and then we'll we'll go off and we'll cut into the actual stuff on the table here. Um, the reason is because I don't own Iwata airbrushes, I don't own Badger airbrushes, uh, I know that they're popular. The only reason I don't own them is because I've never seen the need to own them, because I can use like whatever I have here to do the job and I would say pretty well, uh, you know, compare. So it's not the airbrush, right? It's the person behind it. That's the first thing. And to answer the question straight away, like before we even start in this airbrushing tutorial series, okay, there is no one best airbrush. All of them have their problems. All of them have their, 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 their awesome features. They all clog. All right, <laughs> so it all just depends on what you're doing and what you you know, uh, and, and, and what your uh, what your uh, your needs are from the airbrush. Okay, as well. So um, yeah, it's 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 all about that. But I will go through these. With, I just want to show you my tools. Okay, and uh, I'll I'll point you in the direction of some good airbrushes, entry level airbrushes as well. Okay, and uh, you don't obviously have to get the stuff I've got. Uh, some of this stuff's quite advanced, quite expensive. Okay, um, so you know it might not be a good idea to do that straight off the bat. But uh, even look, a twenty dollar airbrush, right, or a thirty forty dollar airbrush, right, is going to get you a start, and you're going to learn your technique. You're going to learn, you know, the the pressures and, and 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 how to spray the, you know, pump the air first, and then add the paint slowly as you're going. Okay and you're going to get control, right? You're going to get aim and you're going to get control of your airbrush. A lot of that has to do with the grip, which is why you probably notice I have a lot of these gun grip airbrushes. And it's very simple, right? It's for control, all right? Like you see people, they go spraying like that with their top downs, okay? All right, now this was pretty precise as well, but okay, but I, I just cannot get the same control out of this airbrush, all right, that I do with one of these. Now this is not a fine tip nozzle, okay, that one is, I'll open it up later on the channel, okay? All right, everybody, fantastic. That all coming up on the channel, let's get into it. All right, brothers, so yeah, just switched over to the webcam for a sec and strap myself up, I just, um you know, just go through some of these airbrushes here. Because like I said, as I was saying before, you know, what I'm showing you like next, which is like all my gear, like on the proper camera, that's that's my gear. That's just what I use. Um, but I want to give you an all around sort of like prospectus on other airbrushes. Um, now, over here, we've got the top 10 airbrushes of 2018. All right, so linked up. Now, this is just from Google, okay? So I just figured it was probably the easiest way to, you know, sort of go through this and uh, with you, all right? Um, and like I said, I, I don't own many of these because, I mean, like, I do just fine with the airbrushes I use, to be honest. Um, like, I will admit this 0.345 needle tip, all right? That does sound very good, especially for, like, miniatures, um, but like I said, I'm able to pre get some pretty precise stuff with my uh, Tamiya Superfine 0.2. Uh, so you know, well, actually, actually, this is this is way this is way bigger than the 0.2. So my my one is is even smaller. So there you go. So guys, why isn't the Tamiya airbrush listed here? 
you know, did you all forget about it? You know, were you just like, oh, what up? So yeah, like, I mean, super fine. All right. To my airbrush, I just, I just did the unboxing before. Like I, I shot the back of the video after this. So um, I'm just going to go through now, have a look at these ones. So the first one on the list is the Iwata HPCS. All right. This looks like it's it here. All right, you see over Amazon, all right, there's a box and uh, what is that, a Vallejo paint there I can see that's, that's basically penciled in there. It looks like a Vallejo. So, um, yeah, look, I might buy one of these, just check it out. But, you know, even though I don't need to, it's, it's, it might be a decent idea to grab it. Um, you know, I like I said, I don't think it's going to be better than the Tamiya one. It's, that's about a, equivalent to my Sparmax one. Um, even my Sparmax one, even my little fine scale Sparmax one, which I'm going to show you coming up in the, in, in my gear is, uh, is actually finer than that. So, you know, and the rest is just, it's just skill with the airbrush. It's like, you know, oh man, you know, when I press the trigger down, it, you know, it, the, the paint comes out so consistently. Guys, if you like, give your paint the right mixture, it's going to come out consistently. Okay. Like, you know, if you know what you're doing, like, it's it's gonna work no matter what you're using, you know. Unless you you're, you're airbrushing with a you know twenty dollar piece of crap, you know, from from Golo or something, okay. But anyway, uh, it says uh, I'll just read this one out. Both beginner friendly features recommended by professionals, but not only for beginner airbrush artists. Professionals use higher and uh, professionals use higher and I water models too. Uh, it will last you years. The 0.35 needle will allow you to vary between spray hairline to 250 millimeter round that's actually not that good okay like i said my tamaya superfine will go down to 0.2 all right which is 1.5 lower than that and when we're dealing with miniatures you know little men that means a lot okay so plus the handle of it no i'm sorry i still rate my tamaya um limited only by the three out of half oz size cup Again, yeah, small cup on it, okay? The downside is that the nozzle and the needle get warped easily, so you need to be careful and consider that or be aware that replacing those parts is relatively costly. Airbrushes are, de are delicate instruments that need proper thinning of paint. Yes, they do, but, uh, you know, it sounds to me like the build quality is a bit meh, all right? So you see here, it's got some reviews, but it's not, it's not you know, prime. So anyway, we've got the uh, Harder and Steinbeck Infinity CR Plus coming up next. Now, this looks like a more expensive one. This is, uh, you can see it's a lot more heavy duty. All right, so a lot of, a lot of what you're paying for here would be, would be in the build. All right. Um, yeah, let's have a look, see what it says. Again, for miniature painting, guys, I mean, you're looking for the precision, right? You look after your airbrush, it's going to last you for ages. You, you know, there's no point. Buy a good compressor or buy, a, you know, buy extra minis. Don't, like, shell out on this stuff. Although costly, the Infinity CR Plus 2 in one is highly recommended. The craftsmanship is beautiful and the presentation is classy, professional-looking case. Guys, like... Is it a, you know, a, you know, no, like we're meant to be painting miniatures. Who cares about that? Great tool for painting miniatures or bigger objects with a thicker needle, although they now have a representation in the States, one might uh, still struggle to find a local shop for repairs and parts. That's a big one too. Don't do it. Okay. Revolution Iwata. All right. So... So 0.5 millimeter nozzle... So this is this is a good beginner one. So I'd basically be breaking down like this, something like this. Okay, that's actually that's actually uh, not not a bad not a bad one as well. If you really got to go, if I want, I just go something like this entry level, hundred dollars. Okay, Versace H set. This is the one I've got. So that's the one I'll show you next in the um. Or is it? Yeah, no, it is. I think. Oh, it's the same brand anyway, but uh, it's very similar to the pistachio I've got, but uh, there's that one there. That's actually pretty cheap. Uh, here we go, there's another pistachio. No, it's not the one I got. My one was like $300 or something. So, um, T, uh, TG3F. Okay, Talon, and it just goes on. Here are your badges. 
So you got your badges here as well. Um, you know, which are okay, which are a very popular brand for mini painters. Um, this one here, the, the, this one, the Badger Air Brow, okay, is very popular. But again, look, I mean, you know, not for me, but you can just have a look at these ones. I'll, um, I'll put the link in down below as well. So, yeah. And like I was saying, guys, so, you know, it's not, it's not the tool, it's the tradesman behind it. All right. It's the craftsmanship. Um, you know, give me a, give me an airbrush, give me an Audi's airbrush, $20, $30 airbrush, I'll, I'll airbrush your minis, you know, maybe for like the finer, finer tweak stuff, like, you know, the, the, the last level highlights and that, I might go to brushes for that kind of stuff, but, um, you know, I'll just start masking stuff out and that, you know, so really what it's about, airbrush, it feels comfortable for you, all right, and just have a look, but here are some brands here that you can have a look at just quickly before I move on to my... And uh, with that said, everybody, uh, let's jump over to my gear and have a look at my workflow and what I use, all right? Awesome. All right, everybody, so it is time. We're going to have a look at some of this gear now. Uh, I'll be using this gear. This is my personal arsenal. I'll be using this gear as we go through and uh, we do some airbrushing tutorials. So we're probably going to start with, um, you know, just simple undercoating, base coating, priming. I'm going to show you like control of the brush and uh, techniques, spray distances, what you know, a lot of what to do here and there. Uh, I'll make separate videos on cleaning the airbrush, all that kind of stuff. Uh, all this assembly, um, disassembly. All right, I'll make separate videos on all that as well, and uh, I'll probably go through and review all these products individually at a later stage. But like I said, I, I just, uh, you know, I feel as though we need to have a little bit of an overview, right, with the tutorial before we can sort of jump in and just start. Uh, and I, I would recommend that you uh, go off and purchase yourself an airbrush. If you want, send me an email uh, or drop some comments, ask other members of the channel and... Um, have a discussion with them. Uh, you know, if anybody's heard of this airbrush, do you think it's good or not? All right. And, uh, you know, chuck some links up in the Facebook group or on the official blog or just in the comments down below. Whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. So awesome. All right. So folks, I'm just going to chuck this out of the way for now. We don't need that this episode. All right. It's going to be a good one though. All right. So the first thing we've got on the agenda here. I'm going to do the compressor. I'm going to talk about the compressors first, all right? Because they're the bigger thing. I want them off the table so I can better just have a look at the actual brushes themselves, okay? So a compressor is essentially a powered little motor, all right, that creates, uh, that creates air, right? So it's like a virtual, like an artificial air creator, all right? And there's a little motor in here. And uh, they can be quite loud. This is one of my older ones. This is this can actually get quite loud. It's a it's a Spa Max. It's a good one. Um, it works really well. It's pretty powerful. All right. It's a very very good brand. Very compact, but it is it is quite noisy. It is quite on the noisy side. All right. So um, just to let you know, and uh, that's why I upgraded to my to my big boy there in the background. This black one. I absolutely love this thing. It's 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 amazing. I love it. Okay. It's uh, awesome. So um, now. Essentially how it works is it's an on-off switch, you plug it in, right, you have a hose, okay, that connects from here, alright, so the hose like this connects from here, in there, okay, and into the bottom of your airbrush, okay, it's not rocket science, alright, and, uh, and then you basically turn it on, and then you will control the pressure, now in this unit you control the pressure down here, by screwing that under down, uh, up and down, clockwise and anti-clockwise. All right, and what happens is the air on this gauge, all right, this is your pressure gauge, and the more air goes through here, the more air is going through the airbrush, the more power you have behind the spray, okay? Now, people think that, oh, okay, you, you know, you, you pump more air through the airbrush and there's gonna be more paint coming out. And if you wanna do fine detail, you put less air. Most of the time, but not always, okay? A lot of the time, uh, you actually, especially for the super fine detail, super high precision airbrushes I use, because the nozzles are so small, right? Um, they, they literally require like a, a lot of pressure behind them to basically go through and, and pump that air through, okay? So um, for that reason, like I usually run it, these things that maybe 20 PSI, or 15 psi, depending. Uh, sometimes 30, you know, depending on the airbrush. 30 if it's if it's a uh, if it's a super fine heavy one. Uh, 
But yeah, you just got to test it out. You got to check the flow out. You got to check check the consistency of the paint and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, water it down and give it a stir and everything. And, and we will get into this in due course. All right, there is a lot to learn here, everybody. There's a lot to learn. This is like a little little airbrush cleaner. All right, you stick in the nozzle. Okay, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's that one. All right, and you know, it's very easy. And you'll see you'll see later. And we'll do another tutorial. I'll basically operate it as well with you. Okay, so we've got our little we've got our little spray box now, so we can just you know go for our lives and just spray in here, which is really cool. All right, and this this guy here, so this big this big thing, this Terminator, where does fit on my lens? I might just have to bring the camera back a little bit to get this in. Sorry, everybody, it's quite a unit. Okay, this is the master. All right, I love this one. So essentially, this is a very very heavy duty. Um, Compressor all right, not only is it heavy-duty, but it uh, it has its own ballast Okay, so what it means is is that it'll the other compressor I showed you will literally go through and um, and It will just generate air and it will just keep going keep going keep going right and it has like it won't store air But this thing it actually has a storage tank. We'll turn this around right See this thing down here. That's your ballast tank. All right, that's a that's your storage tank Okay, so what happens is here, your air gets generated here, and then actually stores your air, right, down here. So that you don't have to keep, it's, it's actually a lot quieter, which is why I actually bought this unit, because um, it was a lot quieter. The other one was like, brr, and this one is, is, is a lot quieter, because it only makes noise when it, when it loses compression here. So once you, once you charge, it might take like 30, 40 seconds to get a full ballast of air, um, you know, depending how you're spraying, it's only going to kick its motor in now and then. Now, this is very important because, um, you know, it, it saves the life of the motor, but it also, you know, it also saves electricity as well. And, um, and as well as less noise pollution and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't have kids, but I imagine if, you know, people had kids and that, that could be a problem. And, uh, you know, you, you basically, uh, would have to, you know, you'd be, want to be using something like this. Okay. So, that's it, uh, and there. So I'll just turn that around like this. So this is, again, this is the heavy duty guy, the big guy, all right? And you see here, all right? And this is, uh, this is also a Sparmax, all right? This is, this is also a Sparmax. Both my air uh, compressors are Sparmax, okay? Um, cool, and uh, this is one of my airbrushes that I commonly use. All right, so you can usually, you can use it with this off, okay? I, I keep these on when it's when they're in storage okay but um when i'm actually when i'm actually airbrushing i will actually have these off a lot of people do um you want your control here straight away and uh you can always kind of pick a noob when they airbrush with these things on i've found but um anyway look i mean it depends you know it's not a big deal but i just you don't need it there you can just take it off okay so it's uh, no big deal all right that's a compressor this is the one we'll be using on the channel all right and um this is the this is the this is the pressure gauge here all right a lot more power all right, a lot more power, a lot faster compressor. All right, it's an absolute beast. This one, I love it. Okay, so uh, one of these, I can't remember the exact model number. I'll have to look it up. I'll chuck it in the description down below. Um, I think it's 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 look, it's, it's not a not a cheap compressor. Um, you know, you're probably looking at around about maybe maybe three hundred US dollars or something like that for it. So it's uh, it's quite a unit though, and uh, you know. Yeah, the uh, the other one there, the little one, you probably it's a lot cheaper. You probably pick one of those up even second hand for like maybe seventy USD or something like that. Okay, so it's a it's a heck of a lot cheaper. All right, fantastic, everybody. So now let let us have a look at some of these actual brushes themselves. Okay, and I'll just talk to you a little bit about these. All right, everybody. So let's let's go through and uh, let's have a, lo a look at the. Uh, it's some of the airbrushes that I will use. And again, there's different airbrushes for different things, okay? So, the way I do it, I have a standard airbrush that I'll use for like most miniature painting, most sort of like a 25 millimeter painting. And that'll get me my, sort of like my undercoat, my, my base coat, my first highlight, okay? But then when I go to my third highlight, and when I say like highlight, I'm not talking about the edge highlight, okay? I'm talking about the variance in the paint on the third layer, right? Which is like your specular highlight, which hits the which hits hits the actual model itself. And you'll see this as we go through 
and uh, and I, I I will show you this. Okay. Well, I better just just get this airbrush here. All right. But um, but essentially for all that. I just use this guy, all right? Now this is a Sparmax SP20X, all right? It's um, it's a 20, it's a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, right? It's a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. So it's actually, this is crap, all right? So, um, so yeah, essentially, essentially what you're looking at here, um, you're looking at a general all around airbrush for miniatures. You could literally just have one of these airbrushes. You could do vehicles. You could do minis. You could do whatever it is you want. Okay. Now this would be the equivalent, okay, of your standard Iwata or your standard Badger airbrush. Okay, uh, in terms of nozzle diameter, or not even nozzle diameter actually, because this is actually a little bit finer. All right. But this is this is the sort of my equivalent of that. This is the airbrush that everybody's like, oh my god, is I water? Because, you know, someone's using it and they will have to go, okay. But, um, so that's that one, all right? Now, that's my baseline, okay? If, however, I know, let's say I'm doing a, you know, a lot of vehicles all at once or something like that, okay? Then I will go on the upper and I will use this guy here, this uh, Pasashi, all right, or have, whatever you call it, okay, and this is kind of like, it's a lot thicker nozzle in here, and like I said, you can change, you can change the nozzles, all right, however, I like to work fast, like a doctor on the operating table, I don't want to sit there like, you know, changing my nozzles, okay, I want to be like, you know, you know, nurse, give me the, give me the 0.2, Nurse, give me three millimeter. Nurse, give me that. You know, I, I want to be there, bang, 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 because the faster I can do it, the, the better momentum I have, right? The more minis I can paint and the more awesome it is, okay? And uh, and I actually I actually like to work like that because it makes it nice and challenging for me, all right? So that's not a bad airbrush as well. Again, it's quite a pricey one, um, but um, I don't really think it's quite necessary for miniature work, for Warhammer stuff. I think if you're doing fine scaling modeling, um, you probably want to go for something like that. Very durable, very solid. Okay, I've had this one for a while, and um, very, very, very solid airbrush. Okay, uh, and and good, good buy. Okay, it's a bit loose there. I've got to sort of pin up, clean it up a bit. But um, cool. Now this is the other Spar Max. Now this is the step down. This guy here is actually 0. Uh, 0. Uh, 1.5 actually. So 0. Uh, 1. Uh, and this is kind of like your little more precise version to this. All right, so let me just get that in shot. Okay, so this this airbrush here, this will get you more precise, right? So you know you want to go through you're doing top of the shoulder pads or maybe up up the top of the helmet or something like that on a marine or or whatever it is. Okay, this is this is sort of like a little bit more precise. Okay, and it's the uh, HB zero forty. All right, so HB040, and the, this is the SP20X. All right, both Sparmax, both very good airbrushes, both very good quality. You can see here that the cup is a lot uh, a lot bigger here. All right, the cup on this one also comes off as well, which is actually really fantastic, okay, for cleaning. All right, so you can get, get in there, get your brush, and, and go in there and clean that guy right up, okay? So it's a, it's a nice airbrush there. All right, so... Yeah, it's a Sparmax. That's a Sparmax, okay? Now, the other one, the other one, the other one I use is this one. This is also from uh, Sparmax. Now, this is a GP850. All right, this is a GP850. All right, and this is a, this is a big boy. This is a, this is a, this is a tiger. All right, this is a, this is a big guy. And this is basically for batch painting. You can see, like, it's, it's very big. It's a very big, it's got a very big nozzle on the front here. All right, I'm just gonna unscrew that. All right, and um, this is for this is for like batch painting. All right, uh, like like if I had an army, if I was doing an army of vehicles, like army of Lehman Russ or something, then I'd just be like, all right, I need this because I, I need to fill the cup, you know, fill this lid full of uh, full of stuff here, and um, and basically, uh, you know, and 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 use it if I know I'm going to be using the same like amount, okay, of paint. So that's my that's my other uh, weapon, okay, that I use quite often. All right, so yeah, all right, so this that's that one there. All right, now I will go, I will do another another tutorial on airbrush cleaning as well. 
talking about how I, I, I look after my airbrushes quite a lot, okay? Uh, some of them are newer than others, obviously. Um, this super fine airbrush, the Tamiya one, my pride and joy, I've actually got two of them, all right? This guy here. Um, so what happened, what happened was is that uh, at my old place, I, uh, I was airbrushing and um, basically what happened, I was washing it, I was running around and I was, I was washing the uh, airbrush under the sink, all right? And um, basically, the uh, the nozzle dropped down the sink, right, of the airbrush. And uh, so I ran around, I tried to import it and everything, but they literally just told me, they said, look, Steve, uh, you know, in order to re replace the nozzle to the airbrush, uh, you're going to, you pretty much, it's going to be just as, you're probably better off just buying a new airbrush. So uh, whatever, and I ended up buying another one. So I've actually got two of these. But one's missing the nozzle, so what I'm going to do is that's fine. So if that one ever breaks, I've, I've got another one there. And um, this one, 0.2, double action, really big cup. It's got a lid on it. You know, you could fit enough paint in there, but not too much. Gravity fed, the paint just goes through. This thing is amazing for Warhammer work, all right? But we'll get we'll get into that later. Again, that's, a, that's my secret weapon there. It's, it is kind of the Tiger Tank, though. I call it the Tiger Tank. And the reason why I call it the Tiger Tank is... Is basically because, um, you know, it's like it's awesome when it's working, but it's got its issues. Like, you know, it's like a Tiger tank would, would roll up and, you know, it's, if it was running, if the engine wasn't conking out, um, it would be an epic, you know, fearsome beast and kill a lot of other tanks. But, you know, if it wasn't working, it was a nightmare, you know. And it's the same with that airbrush. It, it, it is a very, very fine, super detailed airbrush. Um, it will take a lot of maintenance. You really have to thin your paints properly with it. Um, it it's an art, okay? There's a consistency of paint. Like a lot of these other airbrushes, you could kind of get away with a little bit of variance on your consistency, right? But with that one, it's like the paint's got to be like, you know, really, 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 um, you know, perfect. It's going to be perfect. It can't be too thick, can't be too thin, because if it's a little bit too thick, it's going to clog. If it's too thin, it's obviously going to bleed, okay? And um, so, it's splatter. So, you've really got to uh, got to be careful there and, and talk about what's going on and, and, and watch out. Um, but, like, as I said, when you get used to it, when you know how you're doing, like, it's just highlights on that thing is so fine. Like, I do, like, the tip of the Marines... Uh, the tip of the Marines' uh, shoulder pads and their knee guards and all that. You know, you see that epic variation and, you know, you minimize your masking because the uh, the airbrush is, is just so fine and, like, it's like needle precision. It's just amazing. But it's uh, it's quite pricey. But anyway, so, um, cool. Now, the other thing is here, this, this guy's my cheapy. I don't even know what this brand is, Art Logic. I won't even go there. Um, I think it's broken, to be honest. Uh, I dropped it on the ground, um, like a long time ago. I don't know if you can see that, but the but the tip is actually a little bit bent. So just be careful of that. It's funny though, like I've never had that happen with any of my um, higher end airbrushes. This was like a like a like a fifty dollar uh, fifty fifty dollar airbrush I picked up from somewhere. A noob airbrush that I just wanted a, a you know a crap kicker airbrush. Um, so I got it, and you get what you pay for. It's junk, but it's there. Uh, I use it for close encounters, as uh, as Hicks would say. Um, you know, when I when I want to. Um, so that's the other thing with these things, guys, as well. Um, I use this now for it because because it's older. I wouldn't have used it when I first when I first bought it, but um, but basically I use the, the crappy airbrushes when I want to airbrush like Vallejo Liquid Gold, which is actually an alcoholic-based paint. Now, people say, don't put it for your airbrush, it'll stuff it up. If you're careful, right, and you wash your airbrush with terps or alcohol afterwards, straight away, it actually probably won't. But do that at your own risk, okay? But I've, I've never had an issue with it. But just to be safe, I only pump that stuff through these old airbrushes. I would never, ever, ever put, you know, liquid gold through this. Yes, it would literally obliterate, it would terminate this airbrush here um, if, if you did that, okay? So, so that's basically it, right? So yeah, so hopefully this has given you a little bit of a good idea of where I'm coming from and, and how I work. And again, this is just my workflow, okay? Um, it's not necessarily right or wrong. Um, and we will be, I think we're going to do an undercoating tutorial as well. Because there are things like the Citadel sprays and the Army Painter sprays and all that. And 
another tutorial, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll get into that in another tutorial. Um, but anyway, here is just some containers, mixing containers that I keep around. Um, basically, uh, you know, this is for the Pasashi, uh, and you know, so you can, this is actually, this is actually not real rust, by the way, just to let you know. Um, this is actually when I was, uh, spraying, uh, my Bane Blades, I uh, used some rust and I, I had it in there and I've, I've got a little bit of a secret trick for doing rust and, um, it literally increases painting rust by, like, the workflow by, like, 80%, like, it's just crazy, like, it's, uh, it's awesome, okay, so, and I'll show you all that. Um, just some little Geek Nixon uh, Max here, spare, spare containers, um, you know, little spare airbrush heads, spare adapters, very important, right, because you find that, like, different compressors will, uh, will hit different, uh, will need different adapters for different airbrushes, all right, which is super, super duper important as well, okay, so that's, that's really good, all right, so as well. All right, and then obviously uh, some spare airbrush needles lying around, different different uh, different nozzles. Okay, so you've got your finer tip ones there, which I haven't used, and the reason is because I've got the finer tip ones in my other arsenal. All right, so that's that's really awesome. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll sort of just open this up. Uh, I'll give a this guy deserves its own product review. That's not going to be here. Um, so I guess this could kind of like be a semi unboxing i've got the older one there i probably could have shown you that but i just really wanted to get the tutorial done because um like i know you guys have been hanging out for it so long and thank you so much for for waiting um but uh like there's heaps of guys on the channel who are who are basically just carrying on and um and uh and, and waiting you know for this stuff and gw keep releasing stuff all the time you know so and i'm just like oh we start airbrushing and then you know and so I work full time as well, like, you know, many jobs. So anyway, all right, so, so this is my baby. This is my, my all-time favorite, not without its problems, right? But my, my all-time favorite Stephen Schilling signature secret weapon. This is my secret. This is how I get the crap looking awesome. All right, and this is a spray work HG trigger type airbrush. Super fine, right? Not fine, right? Super fine, all right? So this thing, it doesn't get any finer than this for precision work, right? And it's got that gun grip too, right? Where you could just spray it so it could be really precise, you know? All right, things like a sniper rifle, all right? Absolutely magnificent airbrush. Um, well, not without its problems, but my definite favorite of all time. So instruction manual, we won't be needing that because I'll show you how to do that. I've used this many times before, all right? And, um, and that's it's just some stuff on the back of the box, different compressors. You can also get like air cans as well. Uh, just be careful with air cans. If you're going to use air cans and you're not going to use um, compressors, be very careful because they can get very cold, all right, when you're, when you're using, when you're spraying. So just give them a break for a bit. All right, don't, you can't really continuously use them like you can with compressors, okay? So it's basically it, all right? So, um, all right, so this is my gear, all right? This is my gear, this is, this is my operating table here, all right? Where the, where the magic happens, all right? So this is my arsenal, this is my kit, this is what I use to do my, to do my work. And, um, you know, and, and I, I use a mix of brushes, uh, workflows as well. So I don't, I don't always just go airbrush. I don't always go airbrush. Um, I, I sometimes use uh, a little bit of, like I use maybe 70% airbrush. And then I'll sort of blend stuff in with brushes as well. And I've got a whole heap of brushes and I'll show you those. And guys, I, I, use, I use all types of brushes. Army Painter, uh, Citadel, although they're probably the less best value for money, but some of them are pretty good. Um, best ones I've found, some of the more expensive ones are Army Painter. Um, you know, but I'll, I'll tell you honestly, guys, um, you know, again, I'll probably get chewed out for this by some poop head, but see these brushes here? $6, a whole set, the junk shop. All right? If those will last me nearly as long as, as, as the Citadel ones, um, if you look after them properly, but the difference is 
you get like four brushes for six. They're obviously not for, this is for specialist stuff for weathering tanks and that. This isn't for high precision work. It's just a kit, you know, I've got there, but um, you know, you can see here, I've got like all sorts of brushes. Uh, I can just, uh, yeah, so I've got uh, many, many tools at my disposal for my, for my work. Um, this, is a, this is what you call a micro pen, all right? So um, it's basically how I get my, um, it's basically how I get my inscriptions on my purity seals really, really good. Uh, I actually write it on, I don't paint it on, so I cheat. All right, this, this micro pen is a 0.1 thickness. All right, it's a 0.1 micro pen. It's tiny. Right, you can you can you can download those. You can buy those online. All right, um, I'll try to stick a link down below. I'm not sure. Just go just go looking for it, guys. If you're interested, um, um, yeah, all good. Amazon seems to be a bit weird anyway, and you know eBay. Like I'm not I'm not going to recommend eBay stuff because I don't want to you know send you guys over somewhere and you buy it from someone and it turns out to be dodgy. So you know I'll just let you. I'll chuck some links down below. You know. To some products, you know, you can have a look and uh, maybe take it from there. But uh, but I'm not going to go through and uh, and recommend anyone. Amazon's very trustworthy though, so you know it's not bad. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on these guys. Just make sure I have my focus good. So so yeah. And this this is my kit. This is my kit. Okay, all right. So uh, all right, everybody. Well, look, we've gone through quite a lot today. All right, we've spoken about, um, you know, some of the airbrushes abroad. We've had a look at the eye water and the badges online. You've also seen a lot of the airbrushes that I use. I've spoken a little bit about my workflow. The next tutorial we're actually going to get in there. We're going to actually start airbrushing. We're going to do some undercoating. Okay, uh, probably start on these black legions. It depends. My alpha legions still have not arrived. Okay, so, you know, it's a bit of a bit of a bummer, but what can you do? There's plenty of stuff in the command center that uh, needs to be undercoated. That's for sure. This is, there's even more than this that needs to be done. Okay, there's like cabinets of the stuff. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so we'll, look, we'll go through and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that and there. Uh, all right, so look, everybody, if you have any questions for me, or you disagree me, with me on anything, please feel free to comment down below. You'll find that I'm a very level-headed dude, okay? I might look like a, you know, a bit of a barbarian, but I'm actually a pretty cool dude. And uh, I, I myself am learning, and, you know, I'm continuously learning. And so, like, if you have any, if you think I'm wrong, or you have, you know, any points you want to make in the chat, please comment down below. Let me know, and I'll look into it. Just, I want to be learning as well. That's the point of this channel for me, is that, like, I am continuously trying to, you know, upgrade my process as a as an artist, as a as a miniature painter. Um, so, you know, basically, um, you know, I, I want your feedback. Like, you know, Adam like recommended those war color paints, and they were absolutely wicked. You know, like absolutely wicked. Um, so, you know, and, and I'm going to get some of them and and, and 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 everything. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any uh, questions on airbrushes or or what to buy. Like you know, maybe you can help each other answer each other's questions. You know, uh, I might not know something, someone else might. Okay, so yeah, be interactive on the uh, on the comments, everybody. All right, cool. And uh, I just like to send out a special thanks to our subscribers. Okay, our subscribers. Fantastic. Uh, tomorrow night we'll be doing the uh, prize draw for the 100 subscriber giveaway. Okay, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. You just click that little red icon down below the subscribe button, and then there's a little bell notification button next to it. You click that, it basically means you see when we upload a video. It really helps us out when you do that. Okay, we're growing and uh, we're growing well, but like every view counts at the moment, so it's uh. It's really good, okay. All right, everybody, fantastic, and I will see you in the next video. You all take care now. Bye-bye.